Fortnite is a survival game where 100 players fight against each other in a player versus player combat to be the last one standing. It is a fast-paced action-packed game, not unlike the Hunger Games, where strategic thinking is a must in order to survive. There are an estimated 125 million players on Fortnite. We all know that it is a free-to-play game, so how does Fortnite make money? Luckily for you, Fortune Fastlaner, in today's video, we will be talking about how Fortnite makes money. Fortnite was expected to generate a stunning $5.1 billion revenue in 2020. Despite this, Fortnite accounted for only 4.02% of the gaming industry's global yearly sales of $126.6 billion in 2020. While many of us are unaware, the gaming sector has grown to be the largest segment of the entertainment industry even larger than the film and music industries, which will generate $23 billion and $12 billion in 2020, respectively. Around 78% of the gaming industry's overall revenue in 2020 will be ascribed to the free-to-play business model, which Fortnite also uses. In this video, we will get deeper into Fortnite, going through how it became a cultural phenomenon and its business strategy in detail. How did Fortnite become a cultural phenomenon? Fortnite had been under development for more than half a decade by Epic Games, one of the game industry's biggest names. When Fortnite was released as an early access title in July 2017, the first game mode, dubbed Fortnite Save the World, failed to ignite the video gaming world. And it wasn't until Fortnite introduced a new play mode that it exploded into global popularity. Let's take a step back to set the stage for the launch of Fortnite's new gaming mode. Four months prior to the launch of Fortnite, a PC game called PUBG gained real momentum, largely due to the word of mouth and streamers on sites like Twitch. PUBG announced a new gaming mode dubbed Battle Royale, based on the plot of a Japanese novel of the same name. The new gaming mode was unique. A hundred players descended from a parachute onto a large island, scavenging weapons and hunting one another until one remained alive. And as the game proceeded, a contracting circular border pushed players to face off against one another. The success of PUBG quickly caught the attention of major game developers, and it was only a matter of time before they attempted to replicate the new gaming mode. Epic Games, the firm that created Fortnite, was in a strong position to do so. Apart from being well known for its games, Epic Games is also well known for developing the Unreal Engine, a piece of video game technology that it licenses mostly to other game creators. Due to the Unreal Engine's platform independence, it can be used to develop games for PC, gaming consoles, and mobile devices, a capability that will be critical to Fortnite's success. Two months after the original Fortnite launch, Epic introduced a new free-to-play gaming mode called Fortnite Battle Royale, which was essentially a rip-off of PUBG with some tweaks. There are two types of games, one that looks like a military game and the other that looks like a cartoon game. There were not many people who worked on the PUBG. Even though it had become popular quickly, it was still a work in progress. Epic Games, on the other hand, has been making games for years, has access to the Unreal Engine, and almost has a game that fits the Battle Royale game mode. But not only that, Fortnite could also be played on consoles like Xbox and PlayStation, which are the most popular for playing games. When PUBG came out for consoles at the end of 2017, it was still a work in progress. Because of the advantages it had over PUBG, Fortnite Battle Royale made $1.2 billion in 10 months, even though the game is free to play. When Epic Games came out with Fortnite Creative in December 2018, they added a new game mode called Fortnite Creative. Unlike Battle Royale, where the last person standing wins, Fortnite Creative places players on an island where they can build battle arenas, racetracks, and more. They can also do challenges among others. As of May 2020, around 350 million people were playing Fortnite. That's up by 40% from the 250 million people who were playing in March 2019. But the real question is, how does Fortnite make money? As we learned above, Fortnite has three game modes, each of which has a different way to make money. People buy V-Bucks, the in-app currency used to buy skins, to play Battle Royale. They also buy V-Bucks to buy skins in Save the World. 
Other than that, Fortnite also makes money by hosting virtual tournaments and selling items. Let's look at each of the ways to make money. Fortnite Battle Royale As we said before, Fortnite Battle Royale is a game that you can play for free. A lot of people play the game and don't want to spend a penny, but about 70% of them choose to buy dance moves and skins, which are clothes and accessories. Because none of these outfits and accessories give players an advantage in the Fortnite world, it's amazing that this game is so fun. All these things do is make paying players look different from non-paying ones, which makes more non-paying players want to buy things. To nudge more players to buy, Fortnite creates a sense of urgency by giving access to in-app purchases only for a limited window of time. In-app purchases can be made only by Fortnite's in-game currency called V-Bucks. Here's how much V-Bucks cost in US dollars. 1,000 V-Bucks for $7.99 2,800 V-Bucks for $19.99 5,000 V-Bucks for $31.99 and 13,000 V-Bucks for $79.99 V-Bucks can also be used to buy battle passes, which unlock rewards dependent on the season. While everyone's level resets at the start of a season, battle passes unlock access to new accessories and items, which cost extra. It's important to re-emphasize here that none of these new rewards give you an advantage in playing the game. They just make you look different. Fortnite Save the World Save the World is a player versus environment action building campaign in which players work together to save the world. You and your friends battle to hold back the monster hordes and explore a vast, destructible world where no two games are ever the same. Build huge forts, make weapons, find loot, and level up your heroes as you play this game. Save the World was first available through a number of founders packs until its full release. Save the World can now be bought for a limited time in the Battle Royale item shop. It's a limited time deal right now. It's called the Mecha Pop Pack. When Fortnite Save the World first came out as an early access game in July 2017, it made money the old-fashioned way. Players had to pay $40 to buy the game. Even though there were rumors that Save the World would become free to play, Epic Games decided to stay with the pay to play model when it dropped the early access label on June 30, 2020. Fortnite Creative Fortnite Creative is a free game mode in which players can make their own maps and games in a sandbox like setting. If you make these things, you can share them with your friends or the rest of the Fortnite world. At the start of the game, only people who had bought a battle pass could access Fortnite Creative. Creative mode in Fortnite was made available to everyone for free after a week. This means that the players can now make their own islands in the game. In March 2020, Fortnite said players could send islands they had made to the game. If they were chosen, they would be reviewed and made into islands in the game. For submission guidelines, Epic Games said, Epic has the right to use anything you send to us, even for profit and they didn't say anything about getting paid for it or getting permission from you. Fortnite could either charge to get these islands or use them in some other way to make up for the fact that the game is free to play. Fortnite World Cup The Fortnite World Cup is an annual esports competition based on a video game Fortnite. The first final event was held at the Arthur Ashe Stadium in Flushing, New York from July 26 to 28, 2019. There was a total prize pool of $30 million across the different competitions. People not only play Fortnite, but they also watch other people play for hours at a time on Twitch and YouTube. Over 389 million hours, the game was watched on platforms like Twitch, YouTube, and more in the first quarter of 2021. A person named Ninja is said to make $500,000 a month by streaming Fortnite on YouTube and Twitch. With so many fans who are very excited about the game, the Fortnite World Cup is just another way for the game to make money. People usually play tennis at Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York City, but Epic Games used it for the first time for Fortnite in July. 40 million people played in the Fortnite World Cup. Before the stadium event, there were a lot of rounds of elimination. In the end, the 100 best players went head-to-head -head in the final. As a whole, the tournament had a prize pool of $30 million. 
Finally, a player named Buga won $3 million first prize. Because this event didn't make its finances public, we think Epic Games could have made a lot of money from the media it made. A lot of people are assuming that 2 million people watched the event live and that the videos of the highlights have been seen a lot. This is a lot more than the coverage the event got from major news outlets. But then, no World Cup was held in 2020 and 2021 due to the pandemic. Selling merch is a well-known business approach that is self-explanatory. The only thing worth mentioning is that Epic Games not only sells Fortnite branded gear, but it also sells other branded things such as toys, speakers, and other electronic devices. Fortnite declined in sales. This is the saddest part of this video. While Fortnite made a revenue of $5.4 billion in 2018, revenue declined to $3.7 billion in 2019. In 2020, revenue increased to $5.1 billion but stayed below 2018 peak levels. The drop in revenue suggests that Fortnite may be well past its peak. Will Epic Games be able to increase sales of Fortnite in 2022 with new updates? We'll just have to wait and see what happens. That's it for this video, Fortune Fastlaner. Remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person, as a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you soon!